Shabbat Shalom, everyone. This is a live mic test. How do I sound? Very good. Great. Good, Max? Thank you. Sorry, I didn't have time to sound check that before. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. I was just saying to student Rabbi Ryan and Sam, who's joining us this evening, that I'm a little disoriented coming into Shabbat. I think it was the long walk down the driveway, which leads me to believe I did not use my time well walking into the building, because it should have been just a longer path to set for an intention of walking into Shabbat. So I'm gonna take that opportunity now to recenter myself, to take a deep breath, and ready myself to welcome Shabbat. And hopefully, as we welcome Shabbat with some song, you will do the same. Let us join together. We're going to take a moment for some introductions. Don't go anywhere yet. A few introductions from the Bema. That was supposed to be a cue. Um, I know you've been here for seven weeks. Thank you for clarifying. But everyone, this is Rabbi Illinois. She is a recent graduate from Hebrew College um, and is our new director of our upper school. She'll be working as a director and educator in our learning program, um, the fourth through twelfth grade program. We're so glad to have you in our community. And wouldn't you know, she has a beautiful voice. So welcome to Temple Beth Elohim. <laughs> and Sam Powers is no stranger to Temple Beth Elohim. He's been here many years accompanying us in services, but he is now also working full time here um, with our youth team. So pleasure to have you too join us for services. And student Rabbi Ryan, Shabbat Shalom. You Shabbat don't Shalom need to you, an Rabbi. Introduction, <laughs> um, but Shabbat Shalom. So let us take a moment to introduce ourselves to each other. I notice a few people here who are returning from summers away or school, a few of you here who have made your way to Temple Beth Elohim for the first time. Um, so I would love for you to take a moment to introduce yourselves. If you have to cross the aisle or turn around, go ahead. We'll continue to sing and we'll come back together to join together in a moment. Yeah, I 
Shabbat arrives every single week to give us an opportunity to reset, to recenter ourselves, to count our blessings. For some of us who have marked this week as a period of mourning, we will actually take a break from that mourning so that we can stop and receive the joy of Shabbat. And perhaps the rest of us have a new intention to set for the next 25 hours to help us obtain a bit more of that sense of shalom um, that we seek at all times. Shabbat comes every week, but this Shabbat actually has a special name. It is called Shabbat Mivarchim, which means the Shabbat of blessing. And the reason it is an extra Shabbat of blessing is it is a Shabbat that precedes the welcoming of a new month. Now this Shabbat tends to give us clergy a little bit of the heebie-jeebies maybe because <laughs> it officially means we're almost a month away from the High Holy Days. So after this Shabbat, we will officially be five weeks away from Rosh Hashanah and we will welcome the new month of Elul, which we will receive with great abundance and blessing. But all I have to say is let us just take this Shabbat as the rest it's still summer. We still have time to enjoy ourselves. Um, we have just welcomed those who have gathered on Zoom. We're sending a heart tap and a Shabbat Shalom to all of you. Let us put away our cell phones so that we can clear our space of distractions. And if you are joining us at home or wherever you are, pull your candles close to the screen so that you can light up our Zoom sanctuary. And I'm going to call forward Isabel Page and Aaron Billings to light our Shabbat candles. Let's turn to page 120 as they come forward. Thank you, Rabbi. You can just take this candle and light the Shabbat blessings, and we'll sing together. Let us continue page 142 as we greet the angels that accompany Shabbat. Shabbat begins to arrive. Shalom Aleichem, Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Hasharet, Malachi Elion, Mi Melech. Mahe ham lachim Hakadosh, Hakadosh Baruchu. Boachem le shalom, Mahe ha shalom, Mahe alion. Mi melech, Mahe ham lachim. Hakadosh, Hakadosh, 
Baruch Hu, Shalom Aleichem, Shalom Aleichem, Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Hasharet, Malachi Elion, Mi Melech, Malachi Hamlachim, Hakadosh, Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Barchuni le shalom, Malachi Hasharet, Malachi Elion, Mi Melech, Malachi Hamlachim, Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Shalom Aleichem, Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Hasharet, Malachi Elion, Mi Melech, Malachi Hamlachim, Hakadosh, Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Seichem le shalom, Malachi Hasharet, Malachi Elion, Mi Melech, Malachi Hamlachim, Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Shalom Aleichem. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Hasharet, Malachi Elion, Mi Melech, Malachi Hamlachim, HaKadosh, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We greet Shabbat as we greet our beloved, and we do so with psalms and songs of joy and praise. So let's turn to page 138 for the words of Lechadodi. Shamor v'zachor v'divorecha Yishmi'anu el ha'miyuchai Adonai echad, ushmo echad, l'shem otiferet, velid chila lechad odi. Yeah. 
to face the entrance as we greet the Shabbat presence. as we turn to page 146 for the Baruch Hu, our call to worship. <laughs> Barehu et Adonai Hamevorah Baruch Adonai Hamevorah Le'olam va'ed Le'olam Let's turn to page 150 for one of my favorite prayers, Ahavat Olam. Now on page 152, which is just in one page, we have Shema, which is our blessing really of connection between ourselves and our world and our community around us. And this prayer, the Shema, is really encompassed with love. It gets Ahavat Olam right before, and it gets Ve'ahavta after. So as we enter into this setting, and this part in our service, I invite you to just feel whatever love is coming into you right now, whatever love you have felt throughout the week, and whatever love you would like to send out as a way to just ground ourselves a bit into our Shabbat, to our time of rest, and that we may feel just a little bit of love. Let's try it together. <laughs> Let's try that with all our voices. Top of page 150. Israel. <laughs> Ham 
ha 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 For Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Page 154. Asher Anochi Mitzavecha Hayom Alevavecha Vishinantam Levanecha Vidibarta Bam Vishiftecha Bevetecha Uvlechtecha Vaderech Uvshoch Vecha Uvkumecha Ukshartam Leot Aliadecha Vehayula totafot bene necha Uchtav tam al mezuzot betecha Uvisharecha Leman tizkeru Vaasitem et kol mitzvotai Vihitem kedoshim lelohechem Ani Adonai Elohechem Asher hotseyti etchem me eretz mitzrayim liot lachem lelohim ani Adonai Elohechem Adonai Elohechem emet. I was looking to you for this exciting moment musically. So I hear, so the Micha Mocha is one of those prayers that we recite every night, and it's not a, a story that is unfamiliar to us, as it retells the story of the splitting of the Sea of Reeds, of course, that Moses marches through to freedom when we read on Passover. But the melody tends to take the melody of the season. Mm -hmm. And here at Temple Beth Elohim, it tends to be the choice of the musician leading it. And Ryan told me that he was excited for the melody of the Micha Mocha tonight. Is that right? That is right. So we're coming out of love. We're coming out of Ahavat Olam, <laughs> coming out of Ve'ahavta. And once we find our way out of love, we find our way into this, into this abyss, into this new whole place. And so we're going to sing the same melody that we just mm. sang for, for Ahavat Olam as a way to sort of remind us that this, 
life, this Shabbat, this cycle, we, we are a people of cycles. Absolutely. And so wherever you find yourself coming out of love into freedom, or finding your way maybe like in the thick of the mud as we walk our way to freedom, you might be there. That's okay too. Wherever you find yourself, let's take this melody with us. Sixty, page 161, words of the Hashki Venu, we ask God to lay us down at night with a shelter, a sukkah of peace. Let there be love, page 161, and understanding among us. Let peace and friendship be our shelter from life's storms. Let there be love and understanding among us. Let peace and friendship be our shelter from life's storms. Hashki Adonai Eloheinu Hashiveinu Veshalom Vehaamideinu Shomreinu Lechaim Ufrosalein to catch the mecha, Hashiveinu Adonai Eloheinu, Hashiveinu Veshalom. Let there be love and understanding. Among us, let peace and friendship be our shelter from life's storms. Bless you. We turn to page 164, 
the central prayer of our service, the tefillah, the opportunity on Shabbat to express our gratitude, for we do not ask for anything except for peace on Shabbat. Rather, we express our gratitude. So if you're joining us from home on Zoom, the chat is open to pour forward all of the gratitude that you experienced and want to express from this week. For those of you who are here in person, we'll ask you to rise, whether it is in body or spirit, and let that gratitude pour forth from your lips and your souls in song as we join together. Adonai Sefatai Tiptach V'yagid Tehilatecha Adonai Sefatai Tiptach Open up our lips that we may praise your name. Open up our hearts that we may feel our pain. Open up our souls to let our love make us whole, that we may praise your name, Adonai, Sephatai Tifta, Adonai Sephatai Tiptach Uviagid Tehilatecha Page 166 Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu, Elohe Avoteinu, Vimoteinu, Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sarah, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Leah, Ha El Hagadol, Hagibor, Vahanora, El El Yon. Gomel chasadim tovim, vekone hakol, vezocher chazde avod v'imahot, ume vigula livne v'nehem, leman shemo ve'ahava, melech ozer umoshia umagen, baruch ata adonai, magen avraham ve'ezrat sara. Atagi bor leolam adonai, mechaye hakol atarev lehoshia, morid hatal, mechal kel chayim bechesed, mechaye hakol berachamim rabim, so mech no flim verofecholim, umatir asurim. U mekayem emunato li shene afar. Mi ha mocha ba gevurot. U mi do melach. Melech me mi tu mekaye. U mat mi ach yeshua. Bene man ata lehachayot hakol. Baruch ata Adonai, mechaye hakol. Ata kadosh v'shimcha kadosh, v'kudoshim b'chol yom, yehalleluch asela. Baruch ata Adonai, ha'el hakadosh. 
We continue independently with our own private prayers and meditations through page 180. When you are finished, you may be seated. the middle of page 180. We ask for God to accept these prayers and meditations of our hearts. of those who are in need of healing, whether it is a healing of the body, of the spirit, or of the mind. If you are thinking of someone this evening that you would like to add to our prayers of healing, if you're at home or on Zoom, we invite you to place their name in the chat, 
And if you're here with us in person, we invite you to rise at your seat, say the name of your loved one aloud. And I will begin with the names of Jean Lewis and Anne Salk Rosenberg. Turn to page 371. <laughs> We celebrate our life's joys and milestones together, calling upon you to share with us what blessings you have experienced in this past week. So we can see you here, our computer on Zoom. We can see all of you. If you have a milestone, go ahead and raise your hand or put it in the chat. I'm wondering first if anyone has celebrated a birthday this week. And I'm looking over here because I think I know that Steve Cohen had a birthday. Is that right? Mazel tov. And any other birthdays in the sanctuary or on Zoom? Inez, happy birthday. Mazel tov. I also understand that Charles Silverman had a milestone birthday. Am I allowed to say that it's 80? That's, you happy said it. Happy birthday. <laughs> Mazel tov. All right, I'm not seeing any other birthdays coming on the chat. Any anniversaries this week? Yes. Ours. Yes. No, it is not. <laughs> Last week, yeah. I'm looking at you and I'm like, no, it's not. Yeah. Mazel tov. One year. Oh, yeah, mazel tov. Any others? Beautiful. Any other milestones that we'd like to share? This week, milestones of health or blessing. I have a very special one that I would love to move along to. Aaron, would you join me right here on the Bema? I want to explain first before we celebrate you. It was only about two hours, two hours. ago yeah. that student Rabbi Lesnar and Rabbi Illinois and I joined together with Aaron and her fiance, Izzy, who we met earlier, and her family at Maim Chaim Mikvah to welcome officially Aaron into the Jewish community. You're getting some mazel tovs from all the way back in the sanctuary. So what a special moment as Aaron immersed in the waters to officially become a Jew after a long but meaningful journey of study um, and immersion in our own community. So we have the opportunity and we get the joy and the simcha of welcoming you into our people as a community. So I'm going to invite Aaron to join me on the bima as she has the honor of opening the ark and receiving the Torah. So if you are able, I invite you to please rise.
So Aaron, we stand before the Torahs in our ark, but before I place the Torah in your arm, I want you to notice the stained glass. It might look familiar, perhaps like the living waters of the mikveh that you immersed in just a few hours ago. We also call our Torah by the same name, Ma'im Chaim, because it is our Torah that is a source of life to us. So as I place the Torah in your arms, I do so with great pride, and we also do so with great security, knowing that you will hold these teachings tight and fast and also help us live by them. So we give you the honor of leading us once again in these words of affirmation of Shema so that you also can affirm these words with the Torah in your heart. You want to start us off? Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Malchuto Le'olam Ra'ed And I have a blessing for you before our community, so let's face the ark. Aaron, as you stand before the presence of the holy ark with the Torah in your arms, the Jewish people's most cherished treasure, we remember that it has led us on the way and guided us ever since we received it. It has been carried when our people have fled harm and held high during the times of our greatest rejoicing. As you hold securely on to the Torah this Shabbat and bind yourself to our highest ideals, we offer a blessing upon you. Eloheinu velohe avoteinu v'imoteinu, our God and God of those who have come before us, God of Abraham our father and Sarah our mother, bless Rivka bat Avraham Avinu Visara Imanu, as we welcome her into your covenant and into the community of Israel. May she find contentment in her spiritual practice. May the good deeds of her hands and heart bring her joy and fulfillment. May she feel at home within our faith, nurtured to grow spiritually and intellectually. God, we are grateful for the inspiration which Erin has brought to us, the energy and excitement she has shown, the commitment she has made. May we as a people continue to be blessed by her presence, and may she go from strength to strength. And let us all say, Amen. So Erin, we wish you a big, hearty, Mazel tov. And as we place the Torah back in the ark, we join together as a community with words of Shehechianu for this moment, this wonderful first for you and all of the blessings, birthdays, anniversaries, and joys that we celebrate. Can you help me close the ark? Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehechianu v'kimanu v'higianu l'azman hazeh And Erin is going to lead us off in teaching tonight because she has written a statement of purpose, a statement of her own personal journey to share with our community. Um, We want you all to hear her story so that you too can learn a little bit about her and embrace her as one of our own. So go ahead, Erin. Make sure we can hear you. Okay. I was raised Christian and brought up in the local Methodist church that my parents joined when I was three years old. I went to church, attempted to pray, and tried my hardest to believe in the religion I was raised with, but I felt no connection. 
So I went off to college, slowly starting to accept that perhaps religion was not meant for me. Then I met my fiance, Isabel, who was raised Jewish. I knew nothing about Judaism at the time. On our first date, I told the waitress I wanted to order the chala bread French toast. I was absolutely clueless, but very intrigued. Our first few months of dating consisted of me asking Izzy so many questions about Judaism that she eventually bought me a few books, probably so that she could have some peace and quiet. Her family was Jewish, so I insisted that we celebrate the different holidays together and attend services. My curiosity actually brought Izzy and her family a bit closer to Judaism, its practices, and its beliefs. It didn't take long for me to fall in love with the religion, and after many years of partaking in Jewish practices as an outsider, I had one more question for Izzy. How can I join? Judaism was everything I was looking for when it came to faith. I'm encouraged to ask questions and challenge the ways that people interpret stories. I love that the holidays exist purely for religious connection and not for show. I feel fulfilled by the beliefs that the good deeds we do on earth are not to ensure that we get to heaven, but just to leave the world a bit better than how we found it. As a social work grad student, I believe very strongly in the idea of helping others and spreading kindness without expecting anything in return. And as it turns out, that is one of the biggest themes in Judaism. The practice of going above and beyond to help others is actually how I chose my Hebrew name, Rivka. I liked how when she first met Abraham's servant, she immediately offered him water, an act of kindness without expecting anything in return, and then offered to water all of his camels, going above and beyond without being asked. Rebecca's actions resonated with me, and I feel very strongly about these values. I chose her name to serve as a reminder for myself to always help others without being asked or expecting anything in return. These are values I hope to carry with me in my personal, professional, and religious life. I'm so excited and honored to be joining this community, and I thank you all for welcoming me with open arms. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Aaron. So thank you so much for the joy and sense of renewal that you bring to us. And we all look forward to welcoming you and Izzy and your family for many more celebrations of Shabbat and milestones ahead. So mazel tov to you and great courage in sharing your story as well. So I want to continue with a few more words of Shabbat teaching this evening. Um, a bit lighthearted. This may be more of a reflection than a sermon, um, but I hope you enjoy. I had the distinct pleasure, yes, pleasure, of partaking in several age-old rituals this summer for the first time. I understand them to be sort of a rite of passage. Unfortunately, the kind that you have to put yourself through just to say you did it. I'm talking about hours and hours of really special, sacred work. Painstakingly labeling my kids' underwear and socks, <laughs> along with every single object and article of clothing going with them to Jewish overnight camp, making piles, counting them, worrying that it's not the enough or it's not the right thing, getting everything to fit into a packing cube, into a suitcase, checking the list, checking twice. And please, let's not forget opening the dirty, damp, smelly bags that return home. Hardly a sock with its proper mate, not nearly enough pairs of underwear or too many of them left clean. <laughs> Missing shoes, stained and ruined clothes. And Ellen, Ella and Oren, I assume you are listening, you did a great job at camp. This is not a reflection on you. 
But preparing for this wilderness experience and not wanting to accept these clothes back into my house after the journey, you can imagine my surprise to read the following passage in this week's Torah portion. Deuteronomy chapter 8, Parashat Akev. Remember the way that God has led you to travel in the wilderness. You experienced many hardships. You learned that people do not live on bread alone, but rather that God is present with you. The clothes upon you did not wear out, nor did your feet swell those 40 years in the wilderness. Wait. Excuse me? Hold on. If my children experienced just two weeks in the wilderness with a pretty solid roof over their heads and even camp laundry day, how in the world could the Israelites have wandered 40 years in the desert without worn out clothes or swollen feet? You see what God did here? It's brilliant. We know that there were even more unnatural challenges that the Israelites faced in the wilderness besides dirty clothing and swollen feet, but that is besides the point. God wants us to remember that in the wilderness is where we find holiness. This one is surely true of camp. People do not live on bread alone. Kids do not go to camp in order to eat the food. We go in order to be spiritually transformed and uplifted. And so I thought I would use a few minutes of our time this evening to share some of the spiritually transformative and uplifting lessons and moments we learned from Jewish Overnight Camp this year. Yes, that's right. I did say we. Thanks to the support of my colleagues, our staff, and our community, I was able to travel to the Union for Reform Judaism affiliate Crane Lake Camp in the Berkshires this summer for two weeks with my kids. No, I was not in the bunks, and I was not a camper. Rather, I worked as one of the camp rabbis. My first job was to stay out of my kids' way so that they could have a typical camp summer. But my second was to teach and lead about six hours a day, whether it was the Jewish educational learning programs, guiding the campers as they led their own tefillah worship services, crafting special camp rituals, tutoring the mitzvah students, or providing pastoral camper or staff care. But I have to tell you that I learned the most from the other three to four hours a day that I spent These were the typical hours that I took part in camp life as a staff member. For toilets had to be cleaned, showers scrubbed, floors mopped, tables had to be set, snack prepared, bunks had to be supervised, kids needed accompaniment to the nurse, sports games had to be refereed. All hands on deck were needed to make camp function. It was an amazing reminder of the magic of community and the purpose of a team. Lesson number one, no one is too important to do the so-called dirty work. One of the most delightful things to witness this summer was the joy, the really pure joy, that the campers brought to Jewish learning and practice. Our learning curriculum was based off of a Jewish value or a midah or spiritual practice for the week. The tradition was to announce the value after Havdalah, welcoming a new week and a new value. This in and of itself was a ritual, the announcement. For the director of our clergy faculty would announce the value to the whole camp and everyone would erupt with screaming, cheers, chants, like there was no better thing than chesed, loving kindness, or kavod, respect, because deep down inside, everyone knew that there really wasn't, and that it would be important and fun to explore and apply that value in every way that we could in the upcoming week. 
At Crane Lake, they say, thanks to Dunkin' Donuts, Crane Lake runs on chesed, on loving kindness. Lesson number two. Judaism can be and should be a living, breathing, joyful practice, and Jewish values should be celebrated. When I asked my daughter about the, what the best part of camp was, I hope it's okay if I share, she said, my bunk friends, the animals in the farm, the pool, and lots of other things that you probably won't understand. <laughs> that is to say that there are so many funny and wonderful things that happen at camp that are so hard to explain to someone else who doesn't experience the exact same moment. But those of us who have gone to camp know that the same can be true of many moments. I tried to come home to explain the ritual of Maccabia, of color war, to others. That the start of color war has to be broken or announced as a surprise, out of the blue, something unexpected like fireworks or uh, a delivery from a helicopter or something so outrageous. And all of camp waits and waits for this one unexpected moment to happen, to announce what, of course, will be the best week of our lives. But before that happens at Crane Lake, the staff plan several fakeouts, meaning that they set up a special situation getting so close only to yell, fake out. And the kids, they go crazy with screaming back with chance, Ella, I'm probably going to get it wrong. One, two, three, four, we want a color war. Something like that. Five, six, seven, eight. We don't want to fake out, something like that. It's also silly, did I get it wrong? Yeah, okay, it's all right. So silly, fun, but it's a ritual for the sake of creating joyful, shared experience. Lesson number three, it's worth it to go out of our way to do the unexpected, the silly, just to experience joy. Joy is a sacred Jewish blessing. I had the special pleasure of being a part of a few dozen of our TBE campers summer experiences. Also visiting our TBE campers at Eisner Camp. I know there's a few fans here. I got to see our kiddos in action being their best uninhibited selves. It was special to be each other's support system, creating a home away from home together. Every single meal that Oren and I, that I had Oren with me at our table, a few older Temple Beth Elohim kids would come over, not necessarily to visit with me, but to give Oren a hug and ask him about his day. Firsthand, I think he felt the connection, power, and love of our TBE community. From generation to generation, we need each other how good it feels to be known and cared for, to be important to someone, to have the opportunity to teach and give and care for someone in a way that is supportive. Lesson number four, our relationships are life-affirming. Finally, and I really could go on and on, we experienced and counted so many blessings while at camp. Campers conquered fears and tested limits. We made new friends and learned new skills. Frankly, each day that passed was a blessing. Especially by the end of the summer when day after day and then week after week, it was announced that there was no COVID on camp. Thanks to the hard work and the diligence of every single member of the community. But ah, oh, the blessing to live free from the stress we have all been carrying the past few years. Crane Lake Camp and Eisner Camps are called the bubble because it is not only a haven from an often hectic world, but because it is a sacred sheltered place of blessing. Even in the open air, in the wilderness, it is a sanctuary of blessing. Lesson number five, 
We all need some time or some space to refresh and then return. For most of us grown-ups, that does not look like time away at summer camp, unfortunately. Maybe it doesn't even look like a vacation. But for all of us, it can look like an intentional start to the new year ahead. So let us live with dirty clothes and swollen feet. Let us remember that it is not on bread alone that we survive, but rather the opportunity to recognize and intentionally make room for the powerful, transformative moments that lie ahead in the wilderness. Shabbat Shalom. So let us return to our service as we begin to conclude. Page 586, I invite you, if you are able, to rise for Alina. Alina le Shabbat l'adon hakol l'atet kedula leotzer Shelo asanu kigoye ha aratsot, velo samanu kamishpachota adama, shelo samachel kenu kahem, vego horalenu keho hamonam, la nachnu korim, umishtachavim umodim, leafne melech, malache hamlachim, HaKadosh Baruch Hu V'nemar V'haya Adonai L'melech al kol ha'aretz V'yom ha'hu V'yom ha'hu Iye Adonai Echad U'shemo U'shemo you may be seated for a brief moment as we take this time to think of our loved ones who are no longer with us, whether we have lost them in these most recent days, the mourning period of this past month, or whether we remember the anniversary of their death, uh, the yard site that we remember this Shabbat. If you are a mourner with us, whether you are with us on Zoom or in person, we invite you, if you're on Zoom, to place the name of your loved one in our chat. If you're here with us in the sanctuary, to please rise, share the name of your loved one with, as well as their relationship to you. We also um, remember those who we have lost most recently in our community. Phyllis Klopper, David Eisenstadt, Eleanor Ellie Elbaum, not yet interred, Andrew Hahn, Rosalind Kaplan, Mitchell Kerr, Isabel Michelum, Ted Rifkin, Mary Ann Snyder, Ronald Thibault, Alvin Trachtman, and Carol Weiner. I've been asked to read the names of Harry Bronstein, Mildred Hamelberg, Stanley Lappin, Herbert Rose, and Lena Schramm. May their memories be for a blessing. I invite you to rise in support of the mourners in our community. And in their memory, we turn to page 598 to recite the words of the mourners' Kaddish. Yitkadal vid Kaddash me rabah, velma divrach hirute v'yamlich machute, Bechayechon of Yomechon, Vchaye de Ho Beit Israel, Baagala Uvisman Kariv Vimru, Amen. Yehe Shame Rabba Mevarach Lam Ome Omaya, 
Vit barach vit debach vit pa ar vit ramam vit nase vit a dar vit a le vit a lal shmed kudesha brichu le elam inko berchata veshirata tush bechata venechmata da amiran be ama be imru amen yehe shalama raba min shemaya vechayim alenu be al ko yisrael be imru amen o se shalom bim ramav. Who ya ase shalom alenu ve al ko Yisrael ve imaru amen. Who ya ase shalom, ya ase shalom, shalom alenu ve al ko Yisrael. Who ya ase shalom, ya ase shalom. Shalom Aleinu Ve'al Ko Yisrael Let's be seated. A few announcements you all have hopefully received are e-blast this week with upcoming events, but we will highlight a few. There are several um, Tikkun Olam social action events going on this week. I believe there are still spots open to register for this Thursday's Red Cross uh, blood do do donation drive. Um, blood is at a shortage right now. If you're able to give, um, we encourage you to join us on Thursday. Anything else that you want to lift up? Our I mean, Summer Institute of Learning it's is still going on, so join us this week. And lots and of the little stuff. Lots ooh, of the highlighted up. here, High Holy Days, 5783 are coming. <laughs> just in case you didn't know. Information about our High Holy Day reservations are going to be emailed to all community members on Monday. 